Eccomi qua. Allora, adesso facciamo uno switch di lingua perché la prossima invitata è Lisa Lefovre. So, Lisa, thank you for accepting our invitation. E Lisa, where is it, Lisa? Ok. So, eh, Lisa Lefovre is a, an important curator, writer and editor. Now she's the executive director of Old and Smithson Foundation, dedicated to Nancy uh, Holt and Robert Smithson. In the past, she was uh, head of sculpture studies at the Harry Moore Institute, professor of the postgraduate uh, curatorial program at Goldsmith, uh, Goldsmith College. Uh, she was in the jury of many prizes, as uh, Sculpture Dublin, Arnaldo Pomodoro Foundation Prize, and also Turner Prize. And uh, in the, her editorial work uh, included the book uh, Failure for me press and white chapel and now uh, marco it's your time the name of this interview is uh, around failures and thank you very much lisa to be here with us marco il volume marco il Stop. audio talk sorry Just... can you hear me Perfectly. Thank you, Marco. Okay, and thank you. Oh, sorry. The volume and thanks went up to now. everybody for letting us do this conversation in English. I feel quite shamed. No. Is, Don't worry. Do. We will switch between Italian and English uh, freely during this uh, conference. So, but uh, really, <laughs> no problem. As uh, Valentina introduced, um, we will talk about failures today, which is a quite a strange argument, probably not if you are in a museum of organized projects. And I'd love to start the interview, the discussion with you, um, recalling the failure ontology you created that Valentina talked about a minute before. And uh, I wanted to start from a few words uh, you wrote in the, um, see, that's the introduction to uh, the book. Uh, you wrote that uh, in this uncertain and beginning space between the two subjective poles of success and failure, where paradox rules, where transgressive activities can refuse dogma and surety, it is surely that failure can be celebrated. And well, to start talking about this theme, uh, I'd love to ask you if you think that uh, this space is still present in contemporary art. It's a really nice que question, actually, Marco. Thank you for it. Um, so this um, introduction was written maybe hard 10 years ago or so. And in preparing for our conversation, I reread the essay. And I think some of it does still apply. I remember writing this and talking about it being a time of uncertainties. We knew nothing about uncertainties 10 years ago. Today, it's even more uncertain. So I do think that um, there's a, a productive possibility for rethinking failure. But as is the same, I suspect, with everyone um, listening and talking today, 10 years is quite a long time. We shift our ideas. We see flaws. We see failures, if you will, in particular arguments. So yes, I do think that the words that you read, Marco, um, certainly do have traction relevance to us now in September 2021. But I think if I were to write that introduction again, I would probably shift it um, a great deal, actually, not just because of the changes that have happened, but I can see with distance quite a few flaws in the argument that I was presenting in that introduction. Mm -hmm. That's normal, I guess. <laughs> but in your opinion, is there a relationship between failures as a very vast concept and our realized project, uh, which is a very vast category in contemporary art? Uh, which, is, which relationship could be focused, in your opinion, obviously? Yeah, I think there is a very strong relationship. But to answer your question, I want to take a few steps back about thinking through failure. So failure is something that comes in many different forms. Um, so failure is not always useful. If I'm having heart surgery, I do not want my surgeon 
to fail as she gives me a new heart. I'm sitting um, with you in 42 degrees heat in the United States right now. I do not want the fan above me to fail. Otherwise it will be uncomfortable to talk. So they're two very um, kind of off the top of my head examples. So I think we need to think about failure within the production of knowledge. Um, so for me, I understand artistic practice and curatorial practice, and for that matter, museum practice, as being concerned with the production of knowledge. So what is it that artists, curators, museums do? We test ideas, we put propositions into the world in order to think together about what that might mean. So how does this come to ally with an unrealized project? I think an unrealized project is about possibilities, about a future set of ideas that can happen. It's also about desire as well. It's an unknown realm. In order to make that leap of this desire, this unknown realm, this yet to be tested and tried set of possibilities, one needs to engage with failure. Uh, well, yeah, and, and then we need to think a little bit about, well, what does failure mean? I think traditionally, when we think about failure, it's a judgment. And this is something that I was very interested in when I was thinking about failure a decade or so ago, and it still informs everything that, that I do. What does it mean if failure is released from being a judgment? Um, so we all fail all the time systems fail. And I would say that probably most of us as humans and as institutions have learned the most when we have failed. Because what do we do? We go back and we think again. So if failure is taken away from being something to be hidden, to be denied, to be ignored, we can then open up a space of possibilities. So an unrealized project, let's say by an artist, let's say be even more specific, let's say by Robert Smithson, I think it still holds incredible power because it exists within the mind as a possibility. So I would want to argue that unrealized projects by artists are the foundations of art. And like any foundation, one also requires the realized projects to give a spark to the unrealized projects. So again, thinking about Robert Smithson, he has so many unrealized projects. Um, and yet there are projects that are realized. We can think about Spiral Jetty in the United States. We can think about Broken Circle Spiral Hill in the Netherlands. They are incredibly important projects and his unrealized projects are important. I would say that probably one should not seek to realize these projects, but I'm only saying probably, I'm not saying definitely. That's a that's very good theme, I guess, but very good question. Uh, Trust you, you are president now of the Smith's Note Foundation, so this is a very important opportunity to ask you what should we do with Robert Smith's unrealized project? And in particular, do they deserve um, particular attention in respect to the realized project? Because they are something very peculiar, I'd say, something uh, also in relationship with the artist practice, which is uh, quite well known. So what, as a foundation, would you do with uh, Ariel Smith's unrealized project? Um, in all truth, we're not sure. Yeah, so our foundation um, is a very particular organization. We're very young, we've only been active since 2018, and we've already decided that we will terminate, so we will close in 2038, which is 100 years after both Robert Smithson and Nancy Holt were born. So we see ourselves as being an organization that is thinking through what we're talking about Smithson now, what Robert Smithson's work is over this period. 
So our responsibility is to deal with the ideas, to test the ideas. Um, and when we think about Robert Smithson, I think one of the reasons why his work endures to our generations as well is that he was non-definitive. So let me try and explain that a little bit. I think with Robert Smithson in every project he did, there was never an either or. There was always a both and. So to think about spiral jetty. Spiral jetty is many things. It is the earthwork on the Great Salt Lake. It is an essay, it is a film, it is a set of drawings. It's also about the desire to go there. Um, and Smithson very interestingly described Spiral Jetty, the earthwork as a document. So what does that mean? If the realization of a desired project is a document, that means we would say, just as a proposal for an idea, is that it's a provocation rather than a dogma, rather than being something that's fixed. Um, in 2004, Nancy Holt, um, who ran the Smithson Estate until she passed in 2014, she realized a project by Smithson called Floating Island to travel around the Hudson. Um, so this was simply a drawing by Robert Smithson. And at that time, I was finishing my studies. I was living in London. I remember traveling to go and see this work and feeling disappointed because in a way, the drawing, my imagination, promised something else. It became a spectacle, as it were. So was that a failure? Perhaps. Did we learn something from it? Yes, much. So this is one of our primary jobs, primary tasks at Holt Smithson Foundation, to think about if these projects should be realized or unrealized. And for me, what's so interesting about unrealized projects is they are not failures. They are full of possibilities. In fact, maybe I would even want to test in this very fine company, the idea that a failure is not a failure in a traditional sense. It is a proposal for something that could be realized. And we in the realm of art, we can learn so much from the realm of science. Um, scientists are testing all the time. One can work for 50 years as a scientist and keep on failing yet there's important things to learn. So, so maybe to come back to your very first really wonderful question, um, the reason why failure is so important for us involved in the arts is that we are producing ideas. We're not here to provide entertainment. There's more interesting things than art for entertainment. We're not here to be dogmatic and give people truths. Our business are questions rather than answers. I'm also not here to try and make a difficult, impossible, terrible world better by making beautiful things. We're doing something more complicated than that, or at least I hope we're doing something more complicated than that. That's a very interesting perspective. I recall that when we started the More Museum project, one of our goals was uh, to give uh, simply visibility to something that we believe it was like forgotten or hidden or, uh, you know, lost somewhere, which uh, it encountered a failure, but we believe it was something important that could uh, say something or provoke something. And I would love to discuss you this project uh, of giving visibility to projects uh, what uh, maybe even we are realized or realized we can discuss about it but we were for sure hidden sometimes or uh, you know <laughs> lost somewhere because uh, you know you wrote uh, in an article you wrote in 2008 for the art for art failure magazine that uh, you talked about projects uh, about being released into space of critical engagement. I think that's something very near about what you were talking about before, something very, very important for our profession. 
Mm. There's um, a very wonderful lecture um, that I went to at the Architectural Association at London, in London, um, where, um, gracious, the speaker has just gone right out of my head. It'll come back to me. Um, the argument was that if we think about an exhibition, exhibition is a moment of exhibiting ideas. And the studio is a moment of inhibition. It's a moment of um, privacy, of not releasing ideas into the world. This is why um, I think museums are so important. And this is why your naming of your project is so important. A museum is a moment for making ideas public. And the moment something becomes public, it's no longer um, outside of critical engagement. Um, and I think that's something that's very much linked to failure and to unrealized projects, is when we make an exhibition, we don't want um, the people who come to see it to simply say, I loved it, it was great. What does that do? It does absolutely nothing. What we want is we want to celebrate that friction. So I really believe that a museum dedicated to unrealized projects is through its tautology, fundamentally important for arguing why art matters. So from the outside, what do I think a museum of unrealized projects should, should do? I think it should show these projects. I think it should look at the friction in these projects. Um, and I think the, the question we need to think is why do artists, some artists, choose to not present, to not exhibit the unrealized projects? Is it because they're waiting for them to be realized? Is it because they're secondary? Is it because the possibilities of making them realize requires that secrecy? I don't know. I think maybe this is why failure can help us think about unrealized projects, because if we see them not as being failures, so think about the amount of times that an artist comes up with a project and the thing that we never have enough of, there's not enough money to realize it. Or maybe it comes in advance of engineering possibilities. Um, I think that a museum of unrealized projects is, I want to say something very large here, is more significant than a museum of contemporary art, than a museum of modern art, than an encyclopedia museum, because it gets to what art is really dealing with questions, possibilities, and, and desires for a different future. I think that's very interesting. And we are very thankful for this world because that's one of the things we want to really try to reach, let's say that. And to close this interview, I have one last question before leaving the, the, for the space for the public. I'd love to ask you, uh, last very large question, who has tried to fight today for you? Hmm. Who has tried to fail today for me? Um, well, obviously we are talking about the realm of art. I, I feel more and more um, that when we talk about failure, we need to have lots of caveats. So, you know, we can look at governmental failure. We can think uh, look at structural failure. Who is failing right now? Huh. I would say um, there's an artist who comes to mind um, who is called Oscar Santillan, who is based in the Netherlands and is an Ecuadorian artist. And he's really interested in thinking about science fiction in relation to art. Um, and why is that interesting? Because science fiction is always a projection to something else. Um, it's almost an impossibility. So to deal with that. But as I'm saying these words, because I'm talking as I'm thinking, that's not a very good answer. Um, perhaps uh, 
Marco, you and everyone involved in your museum, you are failing. Um, and oh failing goodness. wonderfully, because a museum that's dedicated to unrealized projects, that, that's what it's all, all about. Um, and if I may just have one moment of indulgence, um, there's one um, point that I really wanted to talk about this morning, my time this afternoon, your time. Um, and then we also have to ask, who is given the right to fail as well? This is something that was a large error in this earlier thinking that I was doing about um, failure. Not everyone has the scope to fail. Um, so um, when we look at the people who are openly dealing with, with failure um, and in the most amplified way, they tend to come from a more privileged position, as in their voices are heard very loudly. Um, whereas people who are often um, not valued as much as others um, are not given the gift of being able to fail. So perhaps this is something that we really need to address. Um, who are judged unkindly for failing and who are judged kindly for failing. So there's a real ethical question here. Um, and we can talk about that more later, perhaps. So thank you so much, really. And uh, Valentina, if there are questions from oh. the public. Thank uh, you very much. It was really interesting, very interesting. Yes, we have uh, uh, two questions. And Zinelli, one of the curator, say thanks a lot for interesting talk uh, and she wrote uh, as a researcher do you have some unrealized project oh my goodness valentina i have so many unrealized projects <laughs> uh, and uh, i'll tell you something about the this moment when um i was writing quite a lot on failure in reality the writing was a failed version of what i really wanted to do which was to make an exhibition on failure yeah. But every single idea I came up with, every way of expressing it um, was very, very bad. Um, oh. And so I felt that writing was a more effective way. And perhaps the solution is to focus on unrealized projects. Um, but yes, I have so many unrealized projects. In fact, I have um, a constant inventory of projects okay. that I would <laughs> want to do uh, at some point. Yeah, a dictionary so, of unrealized yeah, projects. Yeah. You're completely right. Mm -mm. Thank you. Oh, Valentina, I've lost you. So, sorry. <laughs> Uh, so, last question from Elisabetta. Thank you for your talk. Do you think that the idea of collecting and archiving, archiving a realized art project can be defin uh, defined as a failure? I mean, for the impossibility to be completed, for posing more questions than answers? Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I think it will always be incomplete. And maybe it must always be incomplete. I'm thinking a little bit of um, that much referenced um, short story by Borges uh, called Foodus the Memorius, where he writes about an individual who could remember everything. So he could remember everything to the extent that he could remember the feeling of sitting on a chair, the taste of a cup of coffee. And it was so overwhelming that he needed to hide away in a cave to reduce the stimuli in his mind. I think a museum dedicated to collecting unrealized projects will never be complete, but maybe it's the same as any museum. Um, there's always gaps. Um, the, so I'm actually talking to you from Houston, and when we finish our conversation, I'm going to the Menil Drawing Center that has an incredible collection of works on paper but it's incomplete. There's artists who we would all want to see in that collection and they are not there. Perhaps it's that possibility, these gaps, these um, things yet to come. That is why museums are still relevant. So even within the realm of unrealized projects, 
we need to choose which projects are bought into the museum. Um, and that is something that always involves a set of judgments that are situated in this version of the present. So what you are collecting now will be different from what in 2031 we think should have been collected now. So that flexibility of possibilities, I, th I think is even relevant when we come to thinking about unrealized projects. I'm so sorry. The audio feels <laughs> down. <laughs> sorry. So, Lisa, thank you very much uh, for uh, your work. They're really, really interesting. Thank you very thank, much. Thank you, My Lisa. Thanks, many, many, many thanks, thanks uh, Marco. So, and now.